good luck we are like good sir. afternoon everyone good afternoon everyone so on behalf of indian bike association i welcome you all to this wonderful session which is going to be on the an international perspective on biogas so i would also like to uh, welcome our co-panelists in this session so in the session we have a diverse uh, range of co-panelists featuring from all across the globe and we are happy to say that uh, we have uh, mr S uh, dr stephen rock from germany uh, along with medina verbeck uh, from uh, she is also representing a member company from germany and then we have ms tamar rightman uh, representing brazilian biogas association uh, mr vladimir vodavik who is uh, uh, from the serbian serbian biogas association and uh, mr danko vukovic uh, from serbian biogas association as well so i'll be introducing uh, a little bit more about our co panelists but just to set the context of this particular panel i would like to say that uh, uh, over the last uh, one day and today as well in this bioenergy pavilion you might have heard across different biogas experts bioenergy experts speaking uh, giving their view points but this particular session is uh, 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 give, will give you a different perspective we have got a diverse representation from across the countries and with so much of happening across in india with so much of new initiatives coming in right uh, so much of uh, different ministries getting uh, seeking their interest into uh, the indian uh, biogas market so uh, we will have a diverse opinion from all of our co panelists uh, representing the different uh, their different countries uh, so um, uh, so what we expect from our co panelists is that uh, you kindly briefly introduce uh, uh, about the biogas market or biogas journey that your country might have uh, transpressed through and uh, also uh, we would like to know that what kind of challenges and what kind of a uh, stimulus uh, did your biogas industry face all across the journey and would like to take cues from that so without much ado uh, i would like to uh, bring on board uh, the first uh, speaker of the panel and it's going to be uh, dr stephen ross who is uh, ceo at german biogas association uh, to quickly introduce uh, dr stephen uh, he has done uh, his agricultural science uh, studies from technical university of munich Uh, the focus of his studies uh, featured uh, crop production and economic analysis in the field of renewable energies uh, at the end of 2009 immediately after completing his doctorate studies he switched to the german biogas association and since then he has been the head of agriculture department and also has been the managing director since 2013 so uh, welcome stefan uh, would like to hear more from you uh, the floor is all open uh, for you to kind of uh, go ahead okay uh, thank you for your nice introduction um, uh, welcome everybody good day i am pleased to be here and i want to welcome you all and i start uh, opening my screen i hope it works so i hope you see uh, the screen um, and i'd like to introduce you in this presentation about the development of the biogas sector in germany and also of the development of our association that is uh, deeply connected with each other um you see here the uh, um i would like an overview of the bi german biogas associations we have about 4700 members throughout germany uh, for the indian context 4700 might not be much but in comparison we have about uh, 9000 biogas plants operators of biogas plants so you see more of half of the operators are member of our association and almost all technical manufacturers are member of our association and that is very important to have a good exchange of information um, we have also research institutes as members also public authorities and so on and what are our main objectives as a german biogas association we uh, are working on the definition of legal framework uh, but also technical standards um, that is a very important a very important topic uh, and also the lobbying on federal uh, state and also the eu level the european union because the framework 
uh, does change uh, all the time and it's important to be involved as an association so that the framework is positive for the sector that uh, there is a uh, uh, economical a good basis. Um, what is the structure of the Bi German Biogas Association? You see here uh, the whole structure. Uh, I don't want to introduce you to all points. Um, what I think it is very important that you have advisory boards and working groups so that uh, you are uh, that you can be a good partner in discussions with uh, committees and so on, that you have uh, the, a source, you have um, enough knowledge about uh, uh, the biogas sector. Um, on the next slide, you see um, the, uh, the overview about the sector statistics in Germany. Uh, since uh, the absolute figures are not very meaningful compared to India, I would like uh, only to go in detail about the amount of electricity generated in Germany. You see here we produce 33 terawatt, uh, terawatt hour per year, and that means that we supply in Germany about uh, 10 million households. And if you know we have 40 million households in Germany, then you know that one quarter of all households can be supplied with biogas-based electricity. And that it's very important that also shows what importance biogas has in, in Germany. Um, on the next slide, you see um, the development of the sector in Germany on the left side. There you see with the blue columns, the number of biogas plants um, in the last years. The red line uh, is the installed uh, capacity we have in Germany. As you see, we have a little bit more than 9,000 biogas plants in Germany and have an installed capacity of about five megawatts. And on the right side, you see uh, in comparison the development of uh, our association, you see uh, the number of members uh, with the blue columns and the delta of members in the red columns. And as you can see, um, the, uh, the slide or the, the, the graph is quite similar. We have a similar development of industry, of the sector and the association. You see, uh, especially the good times we had in the years 2000 uh, until 2010, 12, 12, 11, 12. Um, here uh, I have marked the times in green. And on the next slide, I want uh, to show you why we had this good times in this uh, years and what to do as an association in these uh, good times. Um, we had this uh, increase, this high increase of biogas plants because we have uh, a new situation in politics. We have uh, the fact that climate protection is important for politics. And so we have a generally good atmosphere for renewable energies since uh, the 2000 years. At the other side, we had little experience and knowledge of technology at the beginning. So the politicians, uh, the ministries, don't know much, uh, didn't know much about biogas. And so we as new association were the first uh, contact partner for the politicians. They asked us about biogas. So the importance of the association in this phase is very high. I think a little bit higher than uh, at the moment. Um, on the other side, uh, we get a new framework that is development in this time and because the experience is low, the association has a high influence on this new framework. Um, also positive for the for growing sector is that in the beginning we had little requirements about uh, for the for the biogas plants for the installation of the, faci for the facil facilities. So as a conclusion we had a very positive situation for the pioneers and so we had a good condition for a growing sector. As an association, what you have to do in these times, you have to establish a broad 
membership. You need companies, operators as well. So you have a financial base and a good source for information that you can represent a huge number of members. So then you can say to the ministry, all the biogas sector is behind our association, stays behind that. So that is very important. And so it is important to development advisory boards in the association to have a structure to develop positions if you are asked by the government, by the ministries. And by this advisory board, you build up exper expertise in different parts uh, of the biogas sector. And you can participate in official bodies. That's one topic to work on technical aspects. But it's also important in the good times to expand your public relations in your country and over your con uh, also uh, overall. Because if you have a growing sector, you get the bad times when you will be confronted with criticism. And that's what we had in, I think, the last 10 years in Germany. That was not easy in these times. Uh, and because of the rising criticism due to different reasons, we had a new framework. And the very important framework in Germany is the renewable energy law. And this renewable energy law was uh, changed uh, several times over the last years. The core remained, but we had different uh, EEGs. You see uh, 2000, 2004, 2009, 2012, we have had different amendments. In the first years, the first amendments of uh, 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 EEG, the uh, feed-in tariffs were higher than in the EEG before. These were the good times I already mentioned. But we also had uh, the not so good times in the following years, starting with the EEG 2014, where we had not so good times anymore. And the framework was not so good anymore in Germany. And that also had also results or, um, uh, that was also uh, important for the associations. Why the conditions changed? Uh, important was uh, that we had were confronted with criticism. For example, we have much maize as substrate that was not good uh, seen in the public, and we have, in comparison to PV and wind, a high cost for our electricity. And so we had a discussion about costs in Germany. And that's why uh, in uh, the years uh, 2014 and following, that we had decreasing feed-in tariffs for new installations. And that's why fewer new installations were, uh, were, in, were constructed. We had therefore a consolidation of the market in the companies. We have a withdrawal of some companies from the market. On the other hand, we have new requirements for existing operators that all leads to a dissatisfaction of our members and of the sector uh, at all. And for our association, it was not easy. We had a stagnation or even loss of members. I showed you the uh, development. And what is important in these times, you have to keep on going on both fields. You have to stay a good partner for the politicians, for the government, for the ministries. You have to work with them to get better conditions uh, in, the, in the future. But you also have to keep on going, stay a good partner for your members. You have to be a good partner though that the members are satisfied with, you, with your work. And it's important to secure the financing situation, uh, the financial situation of the association. You have to join uh, projects um, to get uh, new money, for example. And most important point, you have define and show a perspective for the sector. So, and uh, that is a point where we were quite successful in Germany. And this is shown by the development since October 2019. And this year, uh, we had uh, a new climate package that was um, decided uh, by the government. We have an exit from coal burning uh, in 2038. But we have also new goals for the renewable sources, including bio biomass. And we have a goal for biomass 
that means 8.4 uh, gigawatt in 2030 with electricity production of 42 terawatt hours. And if you compare it to the actual data in the biomass sector, you see that is a uh, little more, a uh, little bit more uh, capacity and uh, a little bit more electricity production. So the sector should remain stable. The government shows they need biomass, biogas as a partner in the uh, energy uh, turnaround. And we get we got a new EEG 2021 uh, that is uh, since the 1st of January, uh, feed-in tariffs that are decided by particip participation in tender processes. And the most important thing for our association, we had have and follow up re regulation for existing plans. We had a EEG, we had feed-in tariffs for 20 years. The first facilities uh, have produced for 20 years and now they get an opportunity for additional 10 years. And uh, we had this in the EEG 2007, but only with the very low feed-in tariffs. And the feed-in tariffs increased about two euros and you see it uh, in different columns. We have also new volumes in the tender processes that are very uh, that have increased in comparison to the time before that all shows uh, that we have now better conditions than in the eeg 2007 we have new opportunities for the market for the companies for the oper operators the future is prepared the government has understood biogas biomass is very important for the energy production, for the energy system in Germany. And that's important uh, that we as uh, association uh, were a good partner for the politics. And as conclusion, good, works, good work pays off and a good association work is important for the development of an industry in a country. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, uh, thanks, Stephen. So it was uh, a wonderful uh, information that you provided uh, regarding how the German uh, Biogas Association uh, had a role to play in all this while. And especially you talked about that golden phase that happened somewhere around 2010, wherein the Renewable Energy Act was put in and uh, there was a lot of government incentives which were provided and promoted the growth of the biogas industry back in Germany. And likewise, we are also in back in India, we are also running that golden phase in a way because uh, freeze, they are uh, uh, floating out different programs. One of the programs that has recently come in is the Satat program, where the oil marketing company companies are assuring the offtake of the compressed biogas produced from any biogas plant, and they are giving long-term offtake agreements. And you rightly mentioned at the end that um, um, uh, giving a long-term kind of assurance for um, uh, the speed, special, special feeding tariffs or incentives, that's important for the market to pick up. Uh, so, uh, and, and in fact, Germany has been a standout player so far as the biogas is concerned and uh, not so without uh, uh, the government, the, the, the positive government interventions being put into the sector. So that's very important and uh, there is some cue that India can pick up from. So uh, thanks for the previous input there. Uh, and uh, now I would like to call upon uh, our second presenter, uh, who is going to be Miss Medina uh, Berbick uh, from uh, uh, LIP GmbH. So she is one of the member companies of German Biogas Association. So Medina, we look forward to hear a little bit about uh, the project executions and uh, how the different kind of uh, biogas projects have been undertaken in Germany. Uh, uh, some uh, learnings from that. So looking forward to hear from you, Medina. Over to you. Thank you very much. Um, hello to everyone. Thank you for this opportunity and this time that we are actually spending together and uh, exchange the knowledge and experience uh, from biogas industry. In case that you don't understand me something or if I speak too, um, um, too fast or something, you can interrupt me, uh, it's okay. Uh, in case that I um, don't have too much time, you also have to interrupt me because I like to speak. So first, um, my name is Medina, I'm, I'm working in a lip company and I prepare you a few examples from the experience. So we are company, we are actually building the biogas plant. So I said, okay, I will prepare you three examples from biogas plant that actually we uh, uh, realize in uh, South Korea, Philippines and French. Um, so 
uh, in the beginning, first I have to say something about my company. I hope uh, it will not uh, disturbing you too much. So generally, we are a tank construction company. That means our main um, business activity is that we are actually building the tanks. So that is, uh, we started that before 60 years and we are doing that uh, today. We are building tanks from different uh, steel material from black steel to stainless steel. And we can build the tanks from 100 cubic meter up to 20,000 cubic meter. Uh, last year, we actually developed the new machine that can also build more than 20,000 cubic meter uh, tank. So um, because this is our most uh, are the impo important um, uh, business activity that we actually construct in tanks. So we are uh, active in different industry, not only from agriculture, commune, but up to uh, oil industry and drinking water. Um, but because we don't speak about different industry, we only speak about biogas industry. When we speak about biogas industry is that we are, have a really, really long history in this biogas industry, this sector because this company built the first biogas plant in Germany. And uh, with the long year experience and with the development of biogas sector, we actually just grow up, grow up with the, uh, with the knowledge and with the experience. For to now we can say that actually we are uh, not only providing the individual components for the biogas industry, but we, we, can, we are able to offer or, or able to create the system solution for one problem um, through the biogas uh, plan. So, uh, like I said, we are a construction company and uh, to not explain too much, I prepared one video uh, where uh, with which technology we actually building tanks in biogas industry. So I hope it will work now. So how can see if we can we take the steel um, coils and we just roll them with our machine. Uh, and building vertical tanks. It's called double seam system technology. This uh, technology was um, uh, um, made or found from uh, establisher of this company, Xavier Lip, before 60 years. And uh, we are using it today uh, all over the world. We have global partnership and we realize more than 30,000 projects worldwide. So uh, now on the basic, on, on the important um, topics. Yeah, just here, this is information with this product portfolio. We are active in biogas industry, but how I say we don't only um, uh, um, um, providing the components like digester, fermenter, tank. We also providing the system solution for anaerobic digestion. Okay, the first study case is actually in South Korea. Um, this, is, this is how it looks like this biogas plan. And it's one of my uh, favorite biogas plan and uh, I already worked in a few years with this. Um, but this is really amazing biogas plan because the background is quite important. Um, so in one island on Jeju, they have the mandarin juice factory. And this mandarin juice factory was, it's just operating seasonally. That's mean it's working few weeks, a few months in a year. And they, in this short period, they are actually producing the juice, the marmalade, the sweets, and the rest of the year, they don't working. They just work this few years, a few months. And this few months, because they're producing their products, they're also producing huge amount of the waste, mandarin waste water. And their idea was, okay, we have already waste, but we just want to send this waste, waste to the wastewater treatment plant that is actually located nearby. It's like about 20 kilometers uh, uh, nearby, but it's also not the problem to, to um, send that. Uh, they had two problems. The problem was that this capacity of this wastewater treatment plant was um, too small. So they produced huge amount in short period. From other side, you have wastewater treatment plant, you cannot accept everything. And second, what's problem was that they have a hu really huge concentration of the COD, chemical organic in demand. And this waste was has 165 gram per liter and wastewater treatment plant only receiving um, the, the waste that is has below than 10. So we were discussing with these environmental engineers from the South Korea, and we said, okay, we have some idea. Uh, let's start, uh, let, uh, let try to um, uh, um, storage this waste that you're actually producing in some container. And then we will try to build some pre-treatment system, which will reduce the COD to the uh, level where you can send to the wastewater treatment plan. And actually this idea was uh, is an anaerobic digestion. It was just to build biogas plan through uh, which you will just send small small pieces of this waste, treat it, reduce COD, and the rest it can go to the wastewater treatment plant without problem. 
So how it looks like this um, schema, I know it's uh, hard to maybe explain, but I'll try to, um, uh, uh, to make it easy on this diagram. So how you can see, uh, it, it's functioning like this. Uh, so this project not only has uh, the background to, to, to produce something like, uh, okay, I need uh, uh, money, I want to produce electricity. They just said, okay, we have problem. It, 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 it has more environmental meaning. If they just uh, try to um, treat their waste that has less uh, pollution to the environment. So it's functioning like this. The raw uh, waste water uh, has to first storage in the two tanks. And after that, uh, it has to be the alteration, uh, it has to be, I'm not to explain that. We said, said okay, because there's still some nutrients in this wastewater. Uh, it's still somehow, uh, maybe you already saw there is uh, somehow you can see still uh, these particles. We, can, we, can, we will try to separate solid part from liquid. Solid, we can still use as animal product. We can uh, use it for production of animal food. And this liquid part is going to the second two storage tanks. And from this, uh, uh, second second two storage tank you um we just uh, take small portion about 20 cubic meters per day that's not too much but it's enough to just go to treat it to, to through this anaerobic digestion system that is completely um uh, developed and uh, built from our side this small biogas uh, system uh then later uh, the output uh, has to go to the centrifuge where we additionally try to uh, separate sludge through uh, from the liquid because the sludge we want to use like fertilizer and the liquid is going this liquid is going to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, this concept is actually planned that if they're producing small amount uh, in few months, this plant is functioning all year. It's you cannot, it, it's so planned. It's not planned only like few months to functioning. It's functioning all year because we just planned this small amount treated a long year. And um, additional information, the biogas that they're producing, it's not a big amount, but actually they're using for production of heat to heat, uh, uh, to, to heat digester because it has to be heated. And also additionally to produce additional um, heat, uh, thermal energy to, um, um, to have warm water in their factory because they need uh, for the cleaning, they need for the workers. So it has a really, really nice purpose. Okay, additionally, like I said, because we are a construction company, these are just short overview for the tanks that we actually build there uh, from inside, outside. Additionally, this is the, uh, uh, mixing pump it's called in combination with the mixing tank um, it's somehow part of pre-treatment system additionally we have a digester and a gas liquid storage tank and all this system like you see now it's functioning uh, it, it, it's functioning automatic it's uh, the, we have we install quite good uh, control system and um, they only have to they have a few workers they have to be there like example to maintaining checking but in uh, reality all um, uh, um, feeding or um, pumping system, everything is functioning automatic. Okay, one more time to see the this beautiful biogas plan. Uh, second study case in the Philippines. Uh, okay, it looks like this. Actually, it, it, it's already built. Now it's in the commissioning phase. In the next few months, my colleague and I will go there and done commissioning, put in operation and training. Um, so this biogas plan has completely different background the reason why actually we build it. Uh, it has hmm, more sustainable waste management. That's mean um, because like we know, the methane has quite huge. Um, it has, it, it, is, it is more than, uh, how to explain? It has more uh, greenhouse gases um, reason like um, because methane is 25 more has potential than CO2 uh, on the greenhouse as, as a greenhouse gases. So our partner in Philippines, it's called MedPower. They were like researching um, how to um, perspective in, 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 uh, in, in Philippines because they have a lot of um, uh, organic waste and not only bio waste, but another type of waste. They just put on the landfill, they just, they just throw away. And through the degradation of this um, um, landfilling like waste, they just put uh, throw away. You just have a lot of uh, methane. And they said, okay, we have all some, uh, we have to, uh, uh, the Philippines has uh, um, not quite good waste management uh, system, but they're trying to uh, develop their, like to improve, to learn from other country. So they said, okay, uh, we have to reduce CO2 emission. We have seals, every, every country has their seals. So our partners, they find quite good 
case for this like perspective, but we, how we can actually reduce this um, emission from the methane. So they said, okay, there is one, they uh, analyzed the Philippines, they found there is uh, on one circle uh, where uh, they have a um, 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 company that there's factory for production of the ananas, um, banana, banana, papaya, mango, they have a lot of different uh, uh, fruits. Uh, they're producing also juice and different uh, products. And they noticed that they actually producing a lot of uh, quite huge amount of waste. So they said, okay, we will do this waste. They calculate how much they have greenhouse gases per year from this waste. And they present us to the Japanese government. The Japanese government said, okay, we like the idea because there is also part of like uh, some of the type of owner of this uh, uh, factory. And they said, okay, because we all have some seals to reduce uh, CO2 emission, greenhouse gases, it is possible to uh, take this fruit waste, uh, treat it to the anaerobic digestion in case, uh, um, and when you treat that, you avoiding, uh, you avoiding uh, about 215,000 tons of greenhouse gases per year. That is really huge amount. And when you see uh, how another country they're fighting with avoiding or reduction of greenhouse gases emission, this is a um, really nice example that is um, possible with one production with one uh, fruit factory, it's possible to save so much uh, greenhouse gases emission. So to reduce this uh, greenhouse gas emission, it was uh, develop wastewater uh, solution that consists from two biogas plan. And one biogas plan, it's called Surala. Second is uh, called uh, Polomolok. Currently, uh, I will only explain the Surala because he is already built and the Polomolok, it will be built, um, yeah, and up to next year. Um, so how is functioning this uh, second system solution or, or the biogas plan in, in, in Surala? It's that um, this fruit waste that they actually, um, they're producing, they have 220,000 tons per year. Um, we just split because we cannot treat everything in one plan. We just split part in Surala, part in Polomolok. So this part what is, uh, that is planned for Surala, uh, this waste has to be first crashed because the ananas um, waste is quite hard. You cannot just put it inside. You have to just crush it. After crush it and mixing um, system to the pump station, it's going to the, uh, to the, to the uh, digester where will be uh, uh, through the anaerobic digestion where we produce the biogas. And uh, this biogas will be used uh, through production of electricity and heat. Uh, so this is quite a different um, um, utilization of biogas than by Korea because the Korea, they're just producing heat energy. They didn't care from the, from the uh, electricity, but this factory, this biogas plant said, okay, we're producing a lot of biogas. We will use this energy. So they said uh, the biogas that it will produce will uh, produce electricity to supply the factory because in the end, a factory has this uh, uh, electricity and they will supply also the electricity to the neighborhood because they also have the people they're living there. They can supply them not only with the um, electricity, but also with the um, heat. And second point is that the, um, the, 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 the solid um, output that is going outside from the, um, from the, from the, from the fermenter it can also be used like fertilizer because they have really a uh, huge uh, agriculture and uh, they don't have enough water. So they said, okay, we can use this uh, like output of the digester because it's really, really rich and, and um, quite good uh, nutrient for the as fertilizer. So it's also find additional uh, um, um, utilization. So this is the second project and this project was also realized. Uh, so we will participate in the planning design and we will do also the installation uh, and commissioning, but our partner in, uh, in, in, in Philippines, MedPower, they're responsible for the intercommunication and they're, they're carrying out this project because they're official partner, uh, our partner in Philippines. Okay, uh, so just short a few photos, uh, which how they looks like these digesters, these are really huge big digester with more than, I don't know, like more than eight, thousand cubic meter of gas um, because they want to be quite flexible with the uh, storage of gas. These are two small um, tanks. One is a uh, post fermenter, one is only uh, like okay, biomass buffer tank. I need to shorten your presentation. We have other speakers as well. So 
kindly wrap. Oh, thank you. No, absolutely. Just I will do like this. And um, this is also additionally because uh, we're also planning one uh, about gas training in Philippines, that we have financial support. Uh, we want to also build there one bi bi biogas laboratory. We do this with the fast fast one biogas as theoretical training, we are practical trainer. And third one study, I will just show you, I will not explain too much. This biogas plan has purpose to production of biomethane and uh, injection into gas grid. And they have two line of the biogas uh, plan. One biogas plan, it's um, operating on the bio waste and second line has operating of wastewater, wastewater sludge and they're collecting biogas from both line and they are doing upgrade to biomethane and the inaction into gas grid. Uh, this is not only how it looks like inside outside and um, I apologize for this time. <laughs> These are our partners that we actually uh, work in worldwide uh, with our projects in biogas industry. I apologize for too much talking. So uh, thanks, Medina. Uh, that was really a wonderful uh, exhibition of some of the case studies that you have undertaken, uh, especially the last one where you are uh, talking about injection into the gas grid line. Uh, that could be something which is very fascinating from an Indian perspective because uh, there, there is a policy which is on cards, not yet out in public domain, but uh, most probably we are also having uh, going to have a policy in which uh, uh, there's a gas grid insertion um, uh, coming into picture. So uh, anyways, uh, thanks for uh, those wonderful uh, case studies. Uh, and now, uh, keeping in mind uh, the paucity of time, I'd like to request uh, um, uh, Tamar. Tamar Reitman is uh, Executive Manager, Brazilian Biogas Association. And to quickly introduce Tamar, she has worked as a researcher in the uh, field of biofuels and renewable energies at FGV, FGV Center and uh, she's looking into uh, the operations of the Brazilian Biogas Association. So Tamar, looking forward to hear from you. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present. So as Abdit has mentioned, I'm from Brazilian Biogas Association. We, I have been discussing with Indian Biogas Association and we have noticed that we are uh, kindly and at the same place right now in uh, considering biogas market. So uh, as uh, as the other associations in, in the world, our mission is to promote the sustainable, sustainable energy. This is our view from a biogas, from a Brazilian Biogas Association uh, to have promote the, the government engagement, public awareness, uh, financing options, regulation that is really important as German Association has mentioned. And we have started in 2013. It's a new market in Brazil. And in, today as associated members, we have around 70 companies which are from all over the supply chain. And as I mentioned, it's still in early stages of the development, biogas in Brazil. I'm going to show you some numbers and some projects uh, as well. So uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the association has started in 2013. And since then, the, the association has been responsible for uh, promoting biogas in Brazil and uh, promoting as well the regulation that, that is needed uh, to develop this, this market and the supply chain. So uh, today, all, uh, all that is needed in terms of regulation is completely um, uh, put and it's, it's, it's well established. So there are the legal framework for, for, for the use of biogas as electricity source and as uh, biomethane for uh, vehicles and for, for uh, use as well as natural gas. Uh, we have some obstacles, of course, the, the development of an industry is not so easy, but uh, all the, the regulation that is needed is already established and this is the first step, right? 
So from now on, our goal is to develop the market and different from what happens in other countries. Brazil is in a situation that is not uh, possible. It's not a good uh, situation for subsidies or incentives such as feeding tariffs, something like that. So this, we have some incentives for uh, renewable energy and, but no, none of them are specific for biogas, is for renewable energy in general. And this is something that it makes a little bit more difficult for this development, right? So we, we work on this, this kind of, of uh, promoting, but our goal is to promote the market and not be so uh, pushing for uh, subsidies since we know our financial situation in Brazil is not open to that. Okay, so how are we today? Uh, we are less than 0.1% uh, of energy production. So, and we hope to get uh, to be 10% in 2030. And now we have like around 500 plants operating in Brazil, biogas plants. Uh, most of them for electricity generation and part of them for um, biomethane production. And we see as a good future for biomethane for the use as uh, the similar as natural gas for uh, fuel, right? And, uh, and decreasing a little bit the production of, of electricity. So uh, most of biogas plants, they are uh, directed for electricity, but we see uh, that the ex expansion of biogas market will be uh, pushed uh, from biomethane. So this is uh, our potential here in Brazil. We, uh, we only use residues to produce biogas there is no uh, culture uh, specifically uh, produced for biogas. We only use residues. And only with these residues, we could produce more than 120 million cubic, cub, million cubic meters per day, uh, just with, with the, in, the residues from sugarcane industry, animal manure, agriculture, and sanitation. This is a, a huge potential. Now we use around 2% of that, but we see that this market is, is growing and we have huge potential for that. So it, as I mentioned, this potential is really high. We could uh, substitute around 35% of the electricity generated uh, at this moment and or more than 70% of uh, diesel uh, demand. And as I mentioned, we see a uh, huge potential for biomethane uh, generation since there is a high demand. Brazil is the largest, uh, it's the fourth largest world fuel market and uh, only 5% of the population has access to natural gas at this moment. And we, we uh, say that biogas is produced where the pipelines can't reach. We have a uh, small, compared to the country, is a small uh, um, quantity and, and of, of pipelines. And so they don't reach all, all of the population, of course, but, and, they are most located on, in the coast where you have a higher production of natural gas and, and petroleum. And uh, biogas is the way to bring this natural gas in, inside the country into the interior. And 
as the regulatory environment that we see is really favorable to, to biogas right now. There are no specific policies for biogas, as I mentioned, there are, there are policies for uh, electricity and for the natural gas. So we see that uh, this environment as really positive for, um, for developing uh, biogas market. So there is this uh, policies for, for uh, natural gas and biomethane is considered equivalent and, and interchangeable with, with, bio, with uh, natural gas. So this policy that is, is being developed for, uh, for the construction of more pipelines, for uh, uh, regulation specifics for, for this market, will increase the amount of, of biomethane that is, uh, it will develop the new projects. Uh, we are passing for, for, for a power sector reform that is uh, to expand the use of renewables with market opening and depreciation of environmental benefits that it's really important since biogas is uh, a really uh, interesting source for decarbonization. Uh, Hanover Bio is a policy directed for uh, biofuels with there are uh, biofuel certification and tradable decarbonization credits. It's already established and it's, it's really interesting and it is promoting uh, new projects here uh, for, for biomethane. And uh, we are now discussing a, a sanitation uh, framework that is to treat uh, uh, um, solid waste so we are in Brazil uh, as a developing country, we have uh, great problems in this area in sanitation, in especially uh, solid waste treatment with uh, not a, a, a good amount of, of landfills. And this, but this is a, a sector that is being uh, developed and uh, this, this framework will help uh, this to, to happen and biogas is, is, a, is a good solution for, for uh, monetize and to, to make these projects more, more financially uh, feasible. So I'm going to, to show you now a little bit what, what's going on in, in, this, in, this, in the market here. Uh, so there is, it's being, uh, there are being produced uh, uh, vehicles using natural gas, and we see that as a, uh, as a push uh, to, to this market. So these uh, tractors, so not only uh, trucks and, and, and buses, but uh, vehicles that are used in, in the, in the agricultural uh, great examples of this in Brazil. This is a, a project in um, a company that produces orange juice and they are already producing biomethane that, that supplies the fleet and the fleet. Uh, so it's completely uh, uh, great for the environment, right? They are using the residues from the orange juice production to produce biomethane that uh, is used in the in the fleet. Here there is a, a project that is it's not being launched already but it's going to be uh, operating uh, now in 2021. It's, uh, it's we, they, they're calling a sustainable city. It's a sugarcane uh, uh, plant that is going to use the residues of the, the ethanol production to produce biomethane. And they are constructing a, a pipeline, a dedicated pipeline, as I mentioned, pipelines are not available all over the country. So they are, uh, uh, the, this plant is, 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 has a partnership with a, a gas, natural gas distributor and they are constructing the, the, the pipeline that's going to, to, 
that's going to that is going that is going to to uh, provide natural gas for uh, a city that is not being uh, does not has natural gas today this is the 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 the, the greater plant in in in, in the largest uh, one in in brazil that is it, that uh, that was uh, launched uh, uh, last year with 21 megawatts of cap installed capacity of electricity it was built in uh, when they they went uh, they won a, a public auction here a public energy auction uh, as i mentioned we have some some uh, specific um, uh, uh, policies and to to develop a renewable energy we don't have a specific auction for biogas we have specific auction for uh, renewable electricity and this is what what happened so and this is the first commercial plant that uses vinyas and filter cake technologies they are both residues from ethanol production in fortaleza there is a, a plant in a landfill that is producing 100,000 uh, cubic meters of biomethane that is being injected in the, the pipelines. And it, it is a really great project. And as I have, have mentioned the, that program called Renova Bio, they are uh, getting uh, these uh, carbon credits for this, from this, this program. And they are uh, hoping to expand the, the, the production. Uh, I, I have mentioned that most of the biogas produced here in Brazil at, on that 500, almost 600 plants are from landfills since they have a higher scale of production. So in Rio de Janeiro also uh, in, a, in, a, in a landfill, you have a production of uh, 18 megawatts of stall capacity uh, in Paraná. Uh, this Tamboara is uh, biomethane production as well that is being sold in, in gas stations. Uh, in Castro, there is a, a project that is really interesting in, in manure uh, from pigs, uh, pig manure. And they are producing electricity and biomethane that is uh, used in, the, in the, the fleet. And it is a really interesting project. In Franca, it's, there is a project to produce uh, biomethane that is used in the, in the fleet, and it is a sewage treatment plant. And in Rio de Janeiro, another plant that is uh, really huge, the, it's one of the, 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 uh, the, 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 the highest uh, production of biomethane uh, with uh, 200,000 uh, cubic meter per day in a landfill as well. Uh, so this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, I think we, we are in a, in a good moment for biogas in Brazil. This is what I had to show and uh, feel free to have questions uh, at, at the end. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, thanks, Tamar. That was uh, really a wonderful insight. You took us through uh, how the Brazilian biogas market is uh, um, has taken off. And uh, what was the most striking thing about your presentation was that despite there being no uh, renewable energy policy, uh, no biogas specific policy as such, uh, you only have Renewable Energy Act and a little bit for the, the natural gas maybe. But despite that, you the kind of case studies that you showcased at the end of your presentation, that's really striking. And it's a food for thought for um, uh, from an Indian perspective that we are banking so much on the subsidies and uh, various other incentives which are being provided by the government. And there is a school of thought which says that without the subsidy, the uh, the viability of the biogas plants won't be there, but your case studies gives a totally different different perspective, and uh, definitely we will take uh, cues from it. So thanks, Tamar, once again. And now uh, taking this uh, further, uh, I think we are running short of time. So far as the presentations are concerned, uh, we will have uh, now Mr. Danko Vukovic, 
Uh, he is the chairman uh, of German uh, Serbian Bike Association. He is also on the board and uh, uh, the co-founder of the Serbian Bike Association. And uh, um, Mr. Mr. Vukovic is the owner of the biggest biogas plant in Serbia as well, uh, which has got an installed capacity of almost 3.6 megawatts. So that's uh, um, really fascinating. So looking forward to hear uh, from you, Mr. Danko. The floor is yours now. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mukherjee. Um, I appreciate this introduction and the chance for our Serbian Biogas Association to participate uh, in your conference. Uh, and I hope that uh, by the next year, uh, we will be able to see each other um, in person as well, not just uh, uh, remotely like this. Uh, I hope that technically uh, you can see my, uh, uh, you can see my screen. Uh, okay, so um, let's uh, let's start with this. Uh, our uh, Biogas Association was founded in uh, 2012 as a nonprofit NGO, uh, as we have experienced uh, several difficulties and setback with the biogas sector by that moment. Uh, the initial feed-in uh, tariffs uh, and the renewable energy tariffs in general were, were introduced in 2010 in Serbia. Uh, with uh, some uh, the decreasements of the feeding tariff uh, being introduced several years after that. So we have uh, concluded that we need to form a, a non-profit association of the Serbian biogas producers uh, in order to approach the government uh, and do something about the feeding tariffs which, we, which have effectively stopped the bio development of the biogas market uh, at that moment. Uh, currently, we have about 50 members that own uh, 22 operational biogas plants at this moment uh, that have a capacity of 21 megawatt. Uh, and 23 of our members are constructing the new power plants uh, in a total capacity of 25 megawatts uh, at this moment. Uh, we, we have, uh, we have uh, an extensive uh, cooperation with the German Biogas Association, uh, and uh, they are our uh, most significant foreign partner in this moment. Uh, we do uh, uh, a lot of uh, different projects together with, uh, with the German Biogas uh, Association. Uh, uh, we have done a lot of training uh, trying to put up the capacities of our uh, association um, in order to be uh, as self-sustaining as possible so not to to uh, uh, depend on external financing uh, but rather be self-sustaining with the funding so received from the services uh, in that uh, retrospect we are trying to use uh, the decades of experience that german biogas association has uh, uh, in operation of the biogas association and trying to do all the trainings and, and trying to get the know-how uh, from the uh, German Biogas Association to, to try and replicate the same uh, success in Serbia. Uh, we have also done uh, a lot of the events and, and a lot of uh, 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 happenings and, and, and a lot of PR activities uh, trying to raise the significance of the biogas uh, in Serbia uh, and trying to explain to the public and to the ministries, to the politicians, the importance of the biogas, that it's not only the electricity generation, but the ecological moment uh, as well, uh, in which we have uh, received a lot of help from the German uh, biogas associations. We have done also the study trips to Germany uh, and, and uh, some other educational uh, content as well uh, as, as we are trying to get as much know-how as I mentioned uh, from the Germans as, as possible. Uh, these are some photos of the events that we have uh, organized uh, throughout the, the two years that we had the cooperation uh, with the German Biogas Association. Uh, these are uh, also some technical events, some, some public conferences, but as well as some PR events where we are trying to raise the awareness. Uh, uh, we have a, one, one very specific situation here in Serbia that, that public opinion on renewable energies is not all that great, uh, specifically because the mini hydro energy, the small hydropower plants, which, are, uh, which have a very negative effect on the environment, uh, on the river streams and such. Uh, so we are trying to present the biogas as a very viable alternative. Um, as as uh, in a package of, of the PR and, 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 and uh, the raising the public awareness, we have done the new website and rebranding, uh, trying to communicate to the public uh, and trying to explain uh, as much as possible about the biogas. We have done a numerous uh, video uh, tutorials, uh, video presentation about the biogas, about our members uh, and, and, and all that. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of uh, TV and media appearance had, had been done. 
Uh, we have uh, uh, cooperated with, with several PR agencies here in Serbia that have helped us. And I believe that right now biogas is one of the uh, hottest topics in, in Serbia in regards to renewable energy. And people are beginning to understand that biogas uh, and to some, some, some extent the biomass as well uh, is the way to go if we want to, to have the renewable energy as an electricity production, as well as a positive uh, environmental uh, influence. So we have, uh, as we as a station, we have a several primary purposes. Uh, so we, we uh, first enable uh, our members to communicate. We are, we are platforms for our members to communicate uh, with, uh, with the policymakers. Uh, we do a lot of trainings of the members. Uh, we organize, uh, of course, this 2020 was, was a bit specific due to the COVID, uh, but our usual year would, will be uh, have a lot of trainings, a lot of seminars uh, um, uh, on the various technical topics that are uh, of our interest to the members. Uh, we will do a, a full support to our members uh, in any way, shape or form the association um, can, can possibly do, uh, for example, to connect them uh, or to share experience with them or, or just to uh, set up a cooperation between uh, the members. Uh, we are trying uh, to see, uh, to look up to, to, to German uh, biogas sector, uh, as the German biogas sector is definitely the most developed one in the world at this moment, and they are at the forefront of the technology and the experiences. Uh, they're doing this for, for so long, for, for the last 30 or more years. Uh, so we are trying to transfer all that positive experience uh, back to, to us and trying to utilize it um, uh, in, in here in the, in the Serbia. Um, and uh, we also do the advisory role of uh, our, our members, our new members, our potential uh, biogas investors into the viability of the technologies, uh, viabilities of the projects, uh, whatever feedstock uh, or substrate they're plan planning to use. So we're just trying to transfer all of uh, the knowledge that, that we can uh, uh, in order to uh, elevate the sector and, and try to promote the uh, the biogas. Uh, the currently in Serbia, we have 28 biogas plants that are fully operational and about 28 megawatts uh, operational capacity. Uh, the, the average biogas plant in Serbia is quite large uh, by the German standards. We don't have we don't have as much plants as in Germany, but they are uh, indeed quite large, about one megawatts uh, each. Uh, our plants have a good uh, uh, pro annual production, but that is due to be, being all the plants, being such a new plants that are uh, on average three years old. So we have about more than 8,000 hours uh, average uh, production in every plant. Uh, and what is interesting uh, in the last two years, uh, since the change of the legislation, uh, we have seen uh, about 100 megawatts in biogas projects uh, that are uh, basically uh, uh, pre-approved uh, and uh, the 70 new plants with about, with about 70 megawatts are being built at this moment in Serbia. So uh, I expect that by the, the end of next year, uh, we'll be having about 100 megawatts of biogas on the grid, uh, which for Serbia, which is a very small country, uh, which is 7 million people, uh, uh, is, is uh, I think, significant uh, at this moment. Uh, I would like to also uh, uh, show this slide uh, to tr try, try to kind of graphically explain the significance of the association uh, and of having an association in a certain market uh, as opposed to just uh, individual influences uh, on the policymakers. Uh, as you can see here, uh, after the feeding uh, tariffs have been announced in 2010, uh, there had been a little development in the sector. Uh, however, in 2012, the feeding tariffs were re reduced uh, by mistake, based basically uh, by the legislators that, that they have used the, the wrong formulations, uh, but we couldn't do anything about it as individual investors. Uh, we just couldn't reach to the official politicians, to ministry makers, uh, to the policy makers and to the ministries. So we have formed an association in 2012. And by the efforts of the association uh, and the international cooperation that we had, uh, mostly with the World Bank, EFC, we had the UNDP and, 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 and GIZ and, and of course, uh, uh, German and the European Biogas Associations, we have been able to, to make the studies and, and uh, influence the policymakers into changing uh, the legislation. And in 2016, the new legislation had been brought. And as you can see in the graph, the biogas sector took off basically starting from the 2016. Uh, there is this two year gap uh, where uh, the, the production is taking off because uh, just of the technical 
uh, nature of the biogas, and and we are still uh, a, a Eastern European country with with a very strong bureaucracy, and getting the building permits and all all licenses in place uh, takes about two years uh, in the project. Uh, what I also want to show you is the um, importance of the biogas in general. Uh, on the left hand side, we can see uh, the installed capacities uh, of the various uh, uh, renewable energy sources. Uh, uh, here with 400 megawatts in Serbia, we have the wind power uh, and we have presented the biogas with 100 megawatts, what we expect uh, by, the, by the next year. Uh, uh, so biogas is, is almost uh, four times less than the, than the wind power. But if we look at the annual production output, uh, they are about the same. Uh, so even though we have much smaller capacity in the biogas, we have uh, the same output as wind uh, at, at uh, a much lower cost when we consider the ecological effect. Because what I want to, to, to stress to everybody and, and what we also stress to our members and to the public is that biogas is not only electricity generating, is a very important ecological uh, aspect to it uh, in terms of the uh, waste removal. Uh, now, the, the future of biogas in Serbia it looks, looks very good. Uh, right now, the, the new uh, legislation on feed-in tariffs and, in general, re renewable energy uh, legislation has, uh, has been in, in progress. Uh, we expect that the new laws covering the renewable energies is done within the next uh, month or two. Uh, what we, as a biogas association, want to do is reduce uh, reliance, reliance solely on the feed-in tariffs. So we want to... Uh, to put the focus on the waste management and, and the waste disposal uh, and the waste handling uh, as opposed to just uh, uh, depending on the feeding tariffs because that will uh, uh, enable us a long-term stability in the biogas sector. So we are working with the Ministry of Agriculture and the Environmental Protection uh, to solve the problem of, of the waste disposal in general in the agricultural industry. The slaughterhouse waste is an extremely big problem here in Serbia. Uh, we, we don't have a proper slaughterhouse waste disposal methods right now in Serbia. Those are just uh, set on, on, out on the landfills. Uh, we, we don't have animal manure disposal uh, uh, set up at this moment. We do have the regulations that have been uh, taken from the EU uh, directives, but these regulations have not been uh, applied and not been enforced. So we are working uh, with the, the, the official uh, institutions to do that. And, and uh, we in general want to just reduce the emissions of the harmful gases, primarily methane, uh, as, as, as a colleague, Ms. Medina has, has uh, uh, mentioned before, uh, the methane is about 25 times more potent as CO2 uh, in terms of the greenhouse gases. Uh, and, and of course, we want to do the uh, development of our international cooperation um, because uh, we do want to use as much of the experience as possible, uh, not to, to redo the same mistakes or do the same things over and over if we can have an access to uh, to other uh, organizations and people's experiences uh, in trying to better off the sector. Uh, that is it uh, of my presentation. I will be glad to take questions uh, in the end. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mr. Danko. So that was a wonderful insight that you had given about the Serbian biogas industry. So um, uh, yeah, we uh, look to take forward some cues from that, uh, from an Indian perspective as well. And now we'll have the last uh, speaker, uh, last but of course not the least. Uh, so we are having Mr. Vladimir Bodalov, uh, who is uh, the co-owner and general manager uh, of a Serbian leading consulting company, the Green Mile team. So uh, we are looking forward to hear from you. And uh, to further elaborate, he has been one of the pioneers of biogas in Serbia, and he supervised the work for the first biogas plant uh, that was built in India. So, uh, so we are looking forward to hear from you, Mr. Vladimir. Over to you. Hello to everyone. Thank you, Mikhail, Mr. Mukherjee. Uh, just a moment, uh, I would like to share the presentation. Okay. Can you hear me? I think. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes, yes. Yeah, we can hear you yes it's okay it's okay 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 now it's okay uh, uh, i'm pleased to to be here and uh, 
first of all, I would like to say thanks to Indian uh, Biogas Association uh, for this opportunity to present our company. Uh, thanks to, to German Biogas Association uh, as a leader in biogas sector uh, for all effort to develop in biogas field and it has a huge contribution in environmental protection and decreased greenhouse effect. Uh, uh, I prepared a short presentation uh, uh, regarding that and uh, as a part of a global initiative for reducing CO2 emission greenhouse effect and improving environmental protection the government of the Republic of Serbia has adopted a set of regulation in 2009 uh, governing the production of energy from renewable sources. Uh, the most significant one was the feeding tariff, which enabled uh, producers of electrical energy from the renewable sources to sell the total amount of produced energy under the guaranteed price during 12 years to the National Electric Company EPS. Uh, the feeding tariff uh, is the higher price uh, than regular price. And sorry, I have something. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like to repeat some facts, as Danko said. Uh, three environmentally conclusions companies, having in mind all the benefits that uh, biogas technology brings, decided in early 2010 to build their plants. That's some historical plan, uh, facts. Uh, uh, Adari Lazar Blace, uh, the, cap the capacity of one megawatt and Mirotin Energy Verbas, uh, the capacity of also one megawatt, and uh, Global Seed Turuk, the capacity 635 kilowatts. Uh, and the interesting thing is that that is the biggest organic uh, dairy farm in Europe Union. Sorry for that. I think that's okay. Now, uh, let's say uh, something about initial problems regarding this installation of biogas plants in this period. Um, uh, the biogas sector faced various problems. Uh, the people uh, re responsible for issuing permits in the competent institutions did not know what biogas plants uh, are. So uh, they were afraid to put their signatures on the project documentation to approve that everything is fine. Uh, that is something uh, practical and uh, that caused a huge problem uh, uh, in the process of issuing uh, documentation for uh, building permit. The planning and construction law was not harmonized with the energy law. That was a really big problem also. The engaged engineers and workers were not familiar with the specifics of biogas technology. Uh, of course, uh, the biogas technology, uh, uh, it was in the beginning in Serbia and uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, there was a lot of problem uh, to with engineers and workers who works on these projects. Technology suppliers from the European Union were not familiar with local laws and market conditions. Serbia is not in European Union, and uh, it was a huge problem uh, to explain that in uh, Serbia, by law, it is not uh, the same uh, principle uh, uh, and uh, procedures uh, with uh, uh, customs on the border. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, also uh, that is influenced on organization of import and cost of customs clearance. Survey today, uh, as Danko said, that we have 28 bug, uh, biogas power plants in operation and the total capacity uh, is about 28 uh, megawatt electrical. There are additional 70 biogas plants with issue building permits. The, the total installed power will be approximately 70 megawatt, mostly in agricultural sector. Uh, at the beginning, uh, let's say something about uh, Grimal team. Uh, that is a consultancy company uh, founded in 2015 by two engineers. Uh, the company started based on strong experience from the, on the first place, of course, biogas field, operational and management experience in the biogas plant. And then cement industry and textile industry uh, experienced a leading position in Germany and French companies in the field of organization, cost control, and production, as well as practical experience in automatization and computer networking system. Also, uh, experienced in leading people, production organization, and cost control. And uh, it's very important uh, experience in safety management. In the present or today, we have many associates both at home and abroad. We provide a wide range of service. So, Vladimir, sorry to intervene, uh, but uh, we'll have to wrap up uh, uh, a bit quickly because we'll have to keep some time for the questions. There's few questions also coming in. So, I'll ask you to go to the core part of your presentation where you can showcase some of your uh, cases or something like that. Uh, last uh, two minutes for you, please. Uh, I'm really sorry for pressing that, but yeah, please. Okay, I will cut up. Okay. Uh, as I said, we provide a, a wide range of service, preparing uh, facility studies, supporting investors in the planning process, selecting the appropriate technology, negotiation, building permission, uh, helping to achieving full performance, cooperation with banks and the loan approval process. We cooperate with a lot of uh, biogas equipment suppliers through consultancy activity between investors, bank and suppliers. Uh, uh, we are doing some education also. Uh, we are solving problem with wastewater in different industries such dairy, slaughterhouse, tannery food industry. Last but, not, last but not least, we are a board member of the Serbian Biogas Association. Uh, some of our activities, uh, uh, analysis of the uh, justification of investment in the co-generation unit in the company water canal. Uh, it was raw material, uh, sewage waste and energy crops. And uh, that was innovative and useful project for one uh, public company from Sombor, Serbia. Uh, as the uh, public company, they can use feeding tariff, but they use electrical and heat energy for all needs. And on that way, they cut their operational costs. Also, uh, we uh, had a lecture. Uh, was held in the Serbian Chamber of Engineers and uh, on the topic of biogas. Uh, we uh, made a project, uh, a project uh, as the uh, contractor on the analytic analytical study of the possibilities and practical applicants of renewable energy sources in uh, public utility uh, companies. Uh, it was IPA Interact program. Uh, also, we are doing uh, consulting service for many companies in Serbia. Uh, one of the biggest clients uh, for uh, our consultancy service is the company Aldaha Serbia, the largest producer of milk and 
sellers in Serbia. Uh, we uh, developed uh, a guide for investors in biogas power plants. Uh, it's uh, the guide deals with the uh, general principles that investors should take into account when deciding whether to invest in the construction of the biogas power plants, uh, as well as when deciding which technology to choose. And thanks to uh, uh, German Biogas Association for financial support on that. Also, uh, we are doing uh, wastewater treatment uh, when uh, there are uh, no other option for disposing of the liquid components of the positive gestalt, it must be purified to a level that can be discharged into suitable recipient. Aware of this problem, the Grimal team can provide a very compact and innovative technological solution for wastewater treatment. Uh, in general, if we are uh, talking about biogas, we are thinking on environmental protection and greenhouse effect. Organic food using uh, post-digestat as, as fertilizer, and after that, if we are using CHP unit, we can have electricity and heat production. Okay, thank you for your uh, attention. I'm, I'm ready for some questions. So now, since we are already running out of time, we will use the last 10 minutes for putting up some questions. There are quite a few coming in. So I will quickly read it out for you. Uh, the first one is, I believe, uh, are there cases wherein plants have gone to, got into some kind of dormant state because of any reason, and then it's brought back into operations? after overhauling or addressal of the reason uh, behind its failure. Are such non-functional plants in demand in new countries as an easy mode of entry into the business? So what it means to essentially say is uh, that if there is a non-functional plant, uh, which is there in uh, any of your countries, and uh, do uh, whosoever wishes to enter into the biogas field, do they find it a, a soft way to enter by renovating that plant? So is there any cases uh, there? So maybe we will seek the opinion of uh, Stefan first, and then maybe uh, it's open to all. Okay, uh, thanks for the question. Um, I think um, it is possible that we see this. Um, uh, there, there are existing plants that have this problem, that there is a problem with the biology, that you have uh, no activity anymore and that you don't produce gas. And that's... Uh, a problem and then you have to clean the digester uh, you have to remove uh, uh, the material out of the digester and then you have to start again with a new material with with uh, act, bac with bacteria and microorganism that are activity that are, um, then you then it's no problem to restart a biogas plant it's important to have a look uh, of your biology about different factors that you don't get in this uh, uh, situation that you have a dead digester. Okay, uh, maybe Medina, would you like to also comment on this? Yeah, I can also um, uh, share a few maybe, uh, because Stefan already explained a really good part. But um, maybe it's possible, it, it's also nice to share because I can tell from my experience or from our experience from the company is um, usually the problem when he said biology problem is um, you have to also have the person, they understand, they, they are interesting to learn to work with biogas plant. It's not only uh, when you said biology to um, go down and again restart, it's all, everything is possible. You just need time for that. But you also have to educate the people. The people they're working with biogas plant, they have to understand uh, it's not only put inside and open the valve and it's functioning alone. They have to be educated to understand how it's functioning and this education is quite really really uh, positive through associations because association they have theoretical with uh, uh, knowledge and uh, they have to not only be educated they have to be trained to work with this um maybe i can if if you want i can also 
say something more, but I think this is enough from me because I will also yeah. leave the place to other participants to say okay. something. Okay, Medina. So uh, it gives us some insight that uh, for non-operational plants, how can you kind of renovate them? So it's not only the biological thing, it's about uh, having the feel about uh, running the plant. So it's an art to uh, run the biogas plant itself. It's art, it's not just engineering. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for the inputs there. So I will go to the next question. Maybe uh, the next question is also very interesting. It says that what's the maximum size of biogas plant? I, I believe by size, they mean the capacity of the biogas plant that is functional in your country. Is there some critical or maximum size that dictates the setting up of a smooth functioning of a biogas plant? So I believe the question is relevant from a large scale point of view. So large scale plants, what's the maximum capacity that you guys have come across in your corresponding countries? I think that's what the question is. Maybe, maybe we can seek input from Danko uh, first. Yes, well, uh, I first of all, as an owner of a 3.6 megawatt plant, if I may say, I, I believe the largest plant uh, is in, in range of tens of megawatts, uh, but the, the, those plants are kind of uh, aggregate of multiple smaller uh, plants, basically digesters and everything. Uh, from some, something from my standpoint, a plant above one or one and a half megawatt is, is essentially just multiple plants linked together up to one. Uh, so up until one megawatt or one and a half megawatt, you have uh, enough digester size to handle it. Uh, the, let's say the, the CHP units, uh, the feeders and everything. And then you just double and, and you can basically extend it to whatever capacity of the uh, substrates you have. That is the limited factor, basically availability of the substrates uh, to run the, the, the biogas plant itself. Perfect, perfect. Uh, so, uh, Tamar, any inputs on that from your side? What's the maximum capacity in Brazil that you have come across? Uh, yes, I have shown in my presentation that we have a 21 megawatts of installed capacity in a sugarcane uh, industry. But we, we don't see that there is a, a limitation, actually, and most of the... the the largest plants are on landfills. We still have landfills in Brazil and really large ones. So there is a potential to produce a lot of energy with this in this kind of plants. Wow, wow, 21 megawatts is really a large number. Anyways, thanks for the input there. So I will take one more question. We still have around four minutes. So this is the last question. Uh, so it says, uh, it's about carbon credit actually. So it says, how much impact does the carbon credit market has on the biogas projects in your respective countries? Or what measurably drives or simulates the biogas market in your respective countries? So if not carbon credit, what is the, so I could hear out from you that it's the government intervention, the feed-in tariffs, right? Proper policies in place, synchronization amongst the ministries, all things we heard about. But any, any particular viewpoint from the carbon credit uh, perspective? Maybe Stefan, uh, you first. Uh, yes, uh, thanks for the question. Um, the carbon credit gets more and more important in Germany. As I said, uh, in the former years, we had uh, classical feed-in tariffs, uh, depending on the energy that is sold into the grid. In the transport sector, we have another system in Germany that is based on uh, carbon credits. Um, you get uh, two euro cent for your uh, molecule of biomethane that you feed into the gas grid, but you get, uh, if you use uh, manure or a residues, uh, four cent uh, as carbon credit. So two third, uh, two, uh, one third is uh, the, the, the energy and two third is by a carbon credit. And if you use manure, uh, so the amount of the carbon credit is even more than you get 80% of your income from the carbon credit and only 20% from the from the energy uh, income. So uh, the markets are changing in Germany in direction of carbon credits. Right. Uh, anybody else uh, from the panel would like to comment on the carbon credit? I think Stefan has elaborated it already. Anybody else? Uh, I want to just uh, add that this crab, uh, carbon credit is um, in some country has a quite good influence or the people recognize this uh, important of uh, carbon credit, but some country they, they, they still didn't hear. So it still has to carbon credit. And um, if I can just add something about size of biogas plant. Um, Tamara, I know that in uh, you have um, in Brasilia 21 megawatt big biogas plant. 
but the bigger biogas plant is, the more your problem have. So I would just uh, add, uh, like Danko said, better to have few small biogas plants. They're just like few lines in style and they just somehow they operating together, but in any case they uh, are operating separate. Then that you have one line, it's um, it's big. Then you have you have um, it, it's really hard to um, manage and uh, so high biogas plan like more than like more than 10, 10 megawatt for me is okay respect. Mm. Twenty one is it's 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 a uh, respect to build, but I want to ask this worker how it's worked there. Just want to ask them. Then they will explain me everything. Cool. So. Wonderful insights there, Medina. Okay, so I think there are many more questions, uh, but then uh, due to the paucity of time, we won't be able to take them all. But in any case, thanks to all the panelists out there uh, for your precious inputs uh, and the presentation. A lot of the inputs that we can take from there, uh, particularly when we kind of uh, correlate the different countries, a uh, lot of cues to be taken, and that's what this panel was set about for. Uh, so I think the audience had a good time and thanks all the audience for your kind attention all this while um, and um, um, whatever questions remain unaddressed, we are there for you. You can just uh, mail it to us and then we pass it on to the corresponding speakers. Uh, we answer your queries in any case and that's what the association are meant for. So uh, we are there to kind of disseminate all the information, awareness creation. So that's um, you know, we are there for. So thanks once again uh, for, for participation and uh, maybe we look forward to meet sometime um, again afterwards. So thanks, for, thanks everyone. Thanks for the great panel. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank, thank you. you. Thank you also from my side.